Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farm and Life at La Forge. So over the weekend I was actually back in Ireland watching the Guinness Six Nations match of Ireland against Wales. So that was a great weekend, I really enjoyed it, but it is good to be back with the dogs and uh, mum and dad. Um, so while I was away, dad was filming a bit. He, so he was shown doing the H210 and the Ford 7000, so getting them uh, sanded down and ready for spraying. He's actually spraying now today, so I'm going to go film him now in a second. I'll show you that. While I was away, he was also filming, I believe, a bit of maze. Um, so doing... So showing the maze pit with the Emily bucket and feeding the, the bigger wins as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you do, please give it a thumbs up. You can now get merch. Um, so I'll leave a link down in the description to that for any of you who are interested. And subscribe to the channel for more episodes in our family lives here in France. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So I'm here back at the 7000, just sanding the bonnet, I have to take off these uh, stickers tonight. And I'm just not taking off the ones off the dash yet. Dash tell I have a kit of stickers ordered. I actually had stickers got for it, but when I took them out of the box, they were a lot different than um, these ones. So I went upon the original ones. So uh, I have it fairly well smooth now, that's where the cab was hitting it. And here then I had to put a bit of fitters. Don't like putting fitters, but it's very little. Uh, when, the doors, when the doors used to f swing open, uh, they used to hit off the bonnet on both sides. So I have a bit of sand in here now on the front. I'm just doing the bonnet. Now this cover here, as I was showing you before, uh, it was a bit gone faded and I actually couldn't find one to get one. So I got some fiberglass and I have that uh, repaired and it looks okay. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I want to spray it now next week. Uh, I'm going in now to show you the 82. Go masking off the rest of this. Um, had a few little bits of fillers to do on this as well, not much. A uh, piece there over the door, it wasn't rotten, but someone had welded a big old ignorant uh, that big yoke on for the beacon light and it's an ugly looking yoke. So again I got off on that, there was a few heavy scrapes. So I have a different bracket there now, I'll show you a proper one and uh, I'll put the on here. So I have this one, got first, see there, and you can flick it down when you're not using the beacon if you're in around bushes or trees or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'll put that on and it'll look better. So that's it. Now I'm not taking out the windows because, uh, well, the chances that you could break one and it's a big job and sometimes the whole rubber to get it back into the same place is very hard and it's a lot of work. Now it's not rotten under the, if it was rotten under the rubber I'd take it out but there's no rust. So it's just that uh, you can see there the paint is gone, that's why I'm spraying it and on the top of the mud guards from the sun the paint is gone but it's not rusty, it's just all the paint has gone off it. Now, just looking at the uh, tractor, uh, it doesn't look like it, you know, you'll often know by a tractor if it was re-spread before, but it doesn't look like it was because, see, uh, there, all them rubbers and all, they're not, if it's spread before, they'd usually be covered. Or you 
Now, some people go to great round spray and they start this, but I don't think a Frenchman did that. Um, say, Ireland and England would be a lot in, uh, more people for doing up tractors. I've yet to meet a fellow over here that uh, you see at this, right, because they all think uh, I'm a nutcase. Uh, so, uh, hope to get this one spread now during the week when it's been too hot there, so I'll mask it all up now at uh, see that. And uh, blow it all off and just spread the bonnet and the cap. So, finishing up now tonight. Uh, masking is finished. Uh, whether I get to put an undercoat on it tomorrow or not, I don't know. And then uh, get the stickers back on it. So, uh, I'm happy now the way that is. So we're here at the pit, uh, before about her Emily bucket, so there it is, it just, when you're using it right, you don't have any waste. Now there's a small little bit of waste there at the very corner, but I don't really mind that. So, <coughs> when I'm finished uh, feeding for the day, I go along at the bottom here, I'll show you, and I do uh, shovel up any loose bits. Now it's not too bad now because the weather is not that, well, it's not in the 20s, but uh, if you have very warm weather and you leave stuff along the bottom there, it heats up. So uh, that's the Emily bucket there, uh, I'll show you, get her up a little bit and then working it up. So there it is, you kind of want to be leaving it that way when you're finished for the day because uh, you'll have no waste and it's great feed, it's uh, not going to be wasted. So we're going in here now to get this uh, a mixture, we actually buy this piece, we don't use that much of it, it's just mainly for the young calves, it's a good roughage, so they don't get uh, I, I, the way that I digest uh, the It's a bit dark here now, but I uh, hope you see it. So the citrus pulp and the lizard are in America, it's called Alpha Laval chopped up. Uh, that and maize works, works very well, so now we put 
uh, it's about three quarter males and between the between our the mix there or the zern or alpha laval and then we give them wheat so now they're starting to eat the full of that bucket twice a day just the calves so that's not bad minerals and all with that there. There they are, our bigger one on the other side. And <coughs> we leave a big heap of stuff there and we shovel it in about three and four times a day. Always keep a fresh bit in front of them. They're doing very, very well. Now, they all can fit in there, plus they have their hay and straw there. So once you keep them all well fed, uh, they're all there to get it. Now oh, there's a, a good calf, I'm really, I'm really uh, satisfied with the limousine bulls, okay. So that was as far as I've got filming over the weekend, so a big thank you to him for doing that while I was gone. And now I'm going to go film him spraying, aren't we Jess? So, we're here at the 7,082.10. Uh, putting on the undercoat on it. So I have uh, a first, uh, the first pieces on. I'll give it all the bonnet and all that, uh, a good coat of uh, the undercoat. The primer I'm putting on is, is an industrial primer. It's not a proper tractor primer, but it's actually, I think, better because it's better for rust in the long run. And uh, it doesn't interfere with the proper forward blue either because I've done it before. So uh, it's just really getting the facelift. All the paint was actually burnt off the bonnet with the sun and I was just afraid in a few years time I might get pitted. And uh, so I was just looking forward to doing this for a while. I'd like to have it looking pretty good. So uh, the stickers, the first set of stickers came and they were wrong. So I have another set ordered that actually didn't come. I have all the other stickers taken off. I hope they do come. And uh, so I'm going to do the primer now today and then leave it till tomorrow and give it a, a small rub down of water paper, real fine paper. And um, so this is what we're using here, I'll show you. That's my mask. This is our spray gun that we use. It's a Bosch. And the longer you don't have to put actually too much tinners with the paint because when you leave this running for a few minutes and when that's going I'll well, be turned off now because you wouldn't hear me talking uh, it actually heats up all the paint and when the paint is warm it flows better this here it's there's no compressor involved it's its own I'll just turn it on for a second I'll show you spraying on in a second 
I find I had a great job. Better for me, it's better than uh, the compressor and spray gun which I have. So uh, it's grand for doing these jobs. Laura sprayed the trailer the last time I had, I think. It was the last job over that I sprayed the wheels. We have another one there as well, a smaller one. Sometimes if we wear two different colours, the little red one, uh, we'd have the two going. But that's actually a better one. Uh, the little red one, as I call it, you have to tin the paint down a bit more, doesn't heat it up as good. So, while I'm here at this, uh, I want to mention uh, a firm I started watching, I'm really interested, and uh, we're kind of from the same uh, same interest in, is a firm in America called Gearock Farms. Now, Laura will probably spell it and have it in the front of it just to pronounce it right. So, um, a very, very good channel in my books. Uh, it all adds up, you know, to have the right amount of cows with the right amount of machinery. Uh, the, the look after number one, that's the cattle. Uh, that means a lot to me. And uh, everything is, <coughs> they're kind of a bit like ourselves here. They use up everything that's on the farm. Uh, I have picked up stuff off them we, with the electric fence posts, uh, what, how to actually repair them. Uh, you never know at all. Um, looking forward every week to looking at their channel. Now, their son did five uh, videos in the last week because the father was gone on uh, holidays or vacation. And they were great as well. So, uh, well worth, good channel, well worth. Uh, if you're interested in this channel, I don't have to say much about them. If you watch one or two, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a few more little bits to be done. Uh, now some of you might say why I didn't take all the weights off and do them separately. It's not a big fully restoration job that. That's going uh, back working uh, again tomorrow or the day after. Because we have, uh, we have the blower on it there we're actually using it yesterday. So uh, if some of you seen it on the video before we made that out of uh, uh, a mesor and it blows, it, it does the cattle for lice. So it's actually a, a tank and this off a quad, but we have it on this then for spraying roadways and all that. We find it a dream. Now uh, we just didn't get the video all of it last year, but hopefully uh, we'll do it now. He too. That's the little red one we have. Uh, actually, Emily often uses it at some jobs in the house, spraying doors and that. Actually, there are some of the four blue that you, when I bought the, the 7000 or it's four grey, he gave me the, the can of paint that came with the tractor when he bought it new. So, and this is almost full. 
So we have the we have more primer now to go on. We have uh, the primer at all mast. We're just let another thing now on this tractor is a facelift, and uh, the bonnet in this was gone a bit. Um, the paint was all completely gone off and nearly from the sun. So, uh, and I was afraid of the cab because the calves on them are uh, real prone to going rusty. Now, there's not a pick of rust on it, and it never looked like that tractor was spread. So, just in case it did start to go, uh, to be bad for it. So, um, I think that's all. Uh, okay, another little tip for those of you that's not that used to painting is the worst about these big cans is they're a lot cheaper to buy primer in and uh, the, but what happens is if you're not using it that often it inclines to go off so when you're just finished with it put in a small little drop of tinners into the bucket on top of it and it'll float along on the top and it'll stop the paint from drying up now you could probably do the same with white spirits on a, a can so I nearly finished with this now and we have that we have that can for a couple of years and it never dried up. So, uh, and over here with the heat is the problem. Another problem we'd have here in a couple of months time is flies. So uh, the flies would stick to it and you'd have to be sanding them off. To be okay with the primer as it only sanded but the blue paint, that's it, it's finished. So you can't be sanding it after. Okay, and uh, there was a couple of comments there which were good ones. Why we bother feeding the suckler cows with the giant feeder. Uh, why we do it on this farm is on all on the cows, most of the cows on this farm are younger cows and we'd have always find, uh, well, the younger cows are harder to go back in calf if you don't put the attention into them. That's why we give them liquid protein, the whole crop and the good silage and there's big calves hanging out of them. So if you don't feed them right, you, you end up with a, a, a yolk on the farm and thing, uh, you end up with an old rag of a cow. On the other farm, we have cows and calves, but they're all older cows. And that's, we're just feeding them with uh, round bales, leaving it in front of the Latin barriers or in ring feeders, and creep feeding the calves. And it's working okay, but I know well from, if, uh, from experience that if we had, if we didn't put the attention into the young cows, we'd have a lot of empties. And another factor is then as well, why we use the whole crop, uh, if we want to get straw into their diet uh, for feeding, because if not, um, it's good for them. Plus, it's very hard to keep them bedded if you're just giving them all silage, because we have no slats here. It's all straw bedded. And it's very good for the cows anyways. Plus, if you don't mix it in the diet feeder, uh, the whole crop and the silage, uh, for some reason, they'll leave the straw and the whole crop behind and eat the silage. But when it's mixed up and chopped, they eat the whole lot. So that's another reason why we do it. Uh, it's mainly for the young cows because we put, last year we put 60 cows, heifers, into the herd. Now this year it'll only be about 40, 38 or 40. But normally that's the figure we'll be putting in the whole time because we, we only fatten cows. But we'll talk about the rest of it again.
It's a great day for spraying outside because uh, there's no dampness and it can have a good shine on. So, uh, hello. So that's that for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.